Good morning. Good morning. We are so happy that you were able to join us today, both in person and online. I hope you have been enjoying the incredible weather. It was so nice this morning. Would you? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Would you please stand and sing with us?
Good morning. How are we all doing this morning? Good. What? Woo! I like that. <laughs> oh, as Jennifer said, the weather is incredible. It is, it is. Well, I just want to say welcome to Creepcore Christian Church. Those uh, visiting here in person, those online, we welcome you. And it's just a, a glorious day to be in God's house. If I fall over sleeping, think nothing of it. I got home from work at 5 o'clock this morning. So, that being said, that's why, that's another reason I'm in that room right there, to wake you up. <laughs> <clears throat> now, I pray everyone is doing well. And uh, I want you to know that the elders pray for each one of you individually. They lift you up to Christ regularly. Um, we pray for everyone that is part of Christ's body, those that have not yet made decisions, those that are making decisions, and all across the world, those that are hopefully coming to the Lord. Um, but last Monday, the mandate came back for these things indoors. That's the, that's the governor's setting. That's, the, that's what they've put out. Um, but let me say this. We're not enforcers. We are children of God. We are struggling. And we have struggled with this. We've had meetings with this. So um, I ask that everyone come to their own conclusion, pray about it, and respect those conclusions, whether it be for it, against it, but not to be a difference that drives a wedge between believers in Christ, please. So I ask that everyone pray considerably over this. Um, we, uh, we want to be what we're called to be, that's shepherds. We're called to make disciples. Let's be unified in the body of Christ. You know, so we want to love and respect each other. We want to draw our own conclusions. We want to pray for the brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to not have differences of them over an opinion, over this, over that. We just want to love one another because God is love. He calls us to do that. You know, so, like I say, there are, there are reasons that people have come to the conclusions of whatever they've come to, okay? Some of it is health this way, some of it is health that way. Health for it, health not for it. They've prayed about it. Respect it, please. Um, but we just want you to know that we love you, we pray for you, and we respect you. That um, doesn't mean that we have easy decisions to ever make. Sometimes we have differences of opinion amongst the leadership, and that's okay. It's okay to have a difference of opinion. Let's not make it a fight or something that divides us. Keep us unified. So pray for us also, please. We, we ask that. Now I want to take us to our announcements, and then I'll have a call to worship, and then we will have an opening prayer by Miss Betty this morning. So I told you I could be long-winded, Bill. You didn't know that either, did you? Never know. Never no see, see, he never noticed that about me. So, <laughs> I love you, but I stop. <laughs> Goodness, those of you that are online, they're, they're really hackling me right now, but that's okay. <laughs> I love them anyway. <laughs> yeah, unity, unity. <laughs> okay. All right, seriously, though, seriously. There. There are things up and coming here that we need to be uh, aware of. Um, first off, the church office is closed tomorrow. Um, so don't, well, you can call and you can leave a message, but don't expect to be able to come and get in tomorrow because there, there will be no one here tomorrow. Snack Pack is Tuesday, September 7th. That's this coming Tuesday, 10 a.m. Please come and join and help get bags packed for the kids. Um, on that note, I want to make an announcement about that. Um, we had a great idea come to us from Richie Stroud that 
when we meet in our small groups, because right now we are currently not having Sunday school because of, well, we're having two services, let's be honest, and most of our teachers uh, are here for both services. It's kind of hard to teach Sunday school and be in, in a service too. So, but on that note, back to Snack Pack. We used to take a collection every Sunday morning in Sunday school. Right now we are meeting every other week with small groups in, in our small group studies. We asked that you would take a collection for snack pack during your small group time. And then please bring it to the church on Sunday. <laughs> so we, we do have a snack pack offering tray back here as well. We have, we have offering trays out back. We have communion out back. And so, so anyways, we ask about that. Uh, we have a fall fun fest coming up in October 2nd, right? Okay. Uh, but we have a meeting pertaining to the fall fun fest on Thursday, September 9th at 5.30 p.m. right here at the church. Correct? Hey, I do get a thumbs up now and again from those of you that are online also. So we have a men's ministry uh, gathering Saturday, September 11th. Prayer meeting Monday, September 13th. We have a lot going on at Creve Corps Christian. And it's all pertaining to worshiping the Lord and being unified. We hope that you have, uh, speaking of the prayer meeting, gotten or received a monthly prayer calendar. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you have not, I think we still have a few here and we can always print more. So it, it has daily prayer concerns, prayer commitments, prayer things. Last Thursday happened to be unity. I thought that was perfect. You know, so um, we have people on our prayer list. Um, I won't be any, any longer than this. Um, but uh, we do, again, we have our offering trays and our communion trays out back. So this is going to bring us to our call to worship. This week I chose to go to... Romans 13, starting at verse 8. It's titled, Love One Another. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And I thought that is perfect for Paul putting that down for today. You know, so, but I'm going to go on too. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for, let me, I told you I'm tired, so let me, let me start that over. Besides this, you now know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, and the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day. Let us not, let's not be reveling in drunkenness, in debauchery, or laiciousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that we love one another and that we come into this house to worship our Lord and Savior. And with that being said, I would ask that Miss Betty come up and open us up in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so graciously thankful that we can come before you and worship you and praise your holy name. We thank you that we can come here today and just honor you. Let it all be about you, Lord, as we sing and praise your name. And we pray for unity in your church. We pray for one another that we just might lift each other up, encourage each other, Lord, and be stronger in you as we go. We thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Mark chapter 6, verses 32 through 34, it says, So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things.
You may at some time have watched a magician or an illusionist who has a small box or a bag and he or she begins pulling things out of the hat, if you will. Here comes a bunny and here comes an umbrella and here comes something else. And you're beginning to wonder, how did they get all that stuff in the bag? Or maybe a better illustration is for those of you who are my age, remember when we watched the original Mary Poppins? And Mary Poppins arrives in the bedroom of the children and she has her bag and she begins pulling out all kinds of things that she'll need to have to be their nanny. And you kind of wonder, how'd she get all that stuff in there? Can you imagine what we would have wondered if we were in the crowd out in the wilderness with Jesus when he fed more than 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. To be sitting there thinking, how is he getting all this food? He just keeps breaking off more bread. He just keeps breaking off more bread. How in the world is he pulling that off? Well, of course, we know. We know the story. We know who he is. We know the miracles that he can perform. There are two stories, actually. You may be familiar with that. In one, he feeds 5,000 not counting women and children. And one, he feeds 4,000, not feeding women, or not counting women and children. And, and I want us to look at them in parallel today. So I'm going to spend some time reading for you. If you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, and we'll also look at Mark chapter 8. In Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 33, the people saw them going, and many recognized them, and ran there together on foot from all the cities and got there ahead of them. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd, and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and said, This place is desolate, and it is already quite late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and to the villages, and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go, look. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. And he commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass, they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food and broke the loaves, and he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them. And he divided up the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up twelve full baskets of the broken pieces and also of the fish. There were five thousand men who ate the loaves. Now if you turn over two pages, if you turn over to Mark chapter 8, we're going to look at verses 1 through 21, but I'm going to start simply with verses 1 through 10. In those days, when there was again a large crowd, and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I feel compassion for the people, because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they'll faint on the way, and some of them have come from a great distance. And his disciples answered him, Where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people? And he was asking them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground, and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them and started giving them to his disciples to serve the people, and they served them to the people. They also had a few small fish, and after he had blessed them, he ordered these to be served as well. And they ate and were satisfied, and they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces. About 4,000 were there, and he sent them away. And immediately he entered the boat with his disciples and came to the district of Delmanyatha. 
Let's look at some of the parallels, will you? Some of the things that are similar in these two stories. The first thing that jumps out at me, and I hope catches your attention as well, is this. Jesus had compassion on the crowds. Jesus had compassion. What we'll see in these two stories, though, is what stirred his heart on behalf of the people are actually two different needs, if you will. You see, Jesus was masterful at being able to engage people and recognize what it is that they needed at the deepest level. And in chapter 6, Jesus looks at these people. I don't know if I, 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 we would have had to go back earlier into the chapter to get the full story. But Jesus had been teaching. He got into a boat with his apostles and they're going across the Sea of Galilee. And this crowd of people actually chased them running around on the shore to get to where Jesus was going to land. We don't want to be separated from Jesus. And so when Jesus actually disembarks and he sees this mass of people, he has compassion on them. Mark tells us in chapter 6, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep with no one to protect them, no one to feed them, no one to lead them, no one to be as God is described in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus' heart went out for them. What they needed. And what they needed was to hear the words of God. Notice in Mark chapter 6, Jesus has compassion on them because they're like sheep without a shepherd, and so he began teaching them many things. Maybe he taught them some of the truths that we read in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Maybe he spoke to them as he did and we read in in the Gospel of Luke when he first opened up the, the Old Testament in the synagogue and he said, these words are fulfilled today in your hearing, telling them that he was the Messiah, that all their hopes and dreams were met in him. Maybe he spoke to them of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds, but when it grows, it becomes a tree in which all kinds of birds can make nest, make home. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. You see, my friends, those of us who are seated here today and everybody on this planet are in desperate need of the Word of God. We so desperately need to hear what God has to say. To sit like Mary in the home of Lazarus at the feet of Jesus because this is the one necessary thing. You watch the news. You listen to people talk and debate. Our world, our state, it's tearing ourselves apart with ugliness and hatred and violence. And people so desperately need hope, but hope is found only in one. Hope is found in Jesus. And so we need to take to them the words of Jesus, but don't limit that just to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For as Paul tells Timothy, all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is God's message. So from Genesis to Revelation, from the first verse of our Bibles to the last verse of our Bibles, these are Jesus' words. We need to know them. We need to live them. We need to speak them. We need to share them if we're going to be like Jesus and have compassion upon the crowds that are like sheep without a shepherd. But then it gets interesting because the disciples themselves, Jesus' apostles come to him and they interrupt him. And and I kind of like this. Jesus has been teaching all day. In first service I said, how would you folks like it if I just preached all day? I actually got one amen. (laughs) Linda is now my favorite member of this congregation, just so you know. The rest of you are tailing behind Jesus, though, isn't Bill, okay? It's probably easier to listen to Jesus all day than listen to Bill all day. The sun has trekked from east to west. What? 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 
behave back there, Diane. Are you causing trouble? <laughs> the, the sun is trekked from east to west, and it's getting late. And Jesus' apostles come and they interrupt him. And they say, Jesus, we need to send these people out that they might find food. It's been a long day. It's been a good day, but it's been a long day, and we need to send them out to find some food. Can you imagine that? There's, there's 5,000 plus people here in an agricultural small town country of 2,000 years ago. Have you ever been traveling and you're hungry and you decide to pull into McDonald's, but as you do, you notice two school buses parked in the parking lot? You know, the track team or the basketball team has finished their game and they're now at McDonald's and you go, ain't no way, and you just keep on driving and you go look for Burger King because you know, the, the food's going to be gone by the time I get in there. Can you imagine in these small communities, every Casey's would have been overrun? So Jesus says, I've got a different idea, guys. Instead of sending them out to the surrounding communities, you give them something to eat. And they are flabbergasted. They are taken back. They say, how? How? We have to understand here, folks, Jesus has just asked the impossible of his apostles. Don't miss that. He has asked them to do something they cannot do. You feed them. Have you ever felt like that? God, you've asked too much. 